This non-destructive methodology provides a means of monitoring the development of cassava under a range of biophysical environments, without the need for planting trials specifically for this purpose. Established plots or commercial fields can be monitored non-destructively. Hence, plots or fields planted for other purposes can be monitored. The methodology provides a means to collect information on the development of the cassava crop. The data can then be used to better understand the development of the crop and also to generate, validate and improve the robustness of cassava simulation models. This is the first approximation or beta version of the methodology. We encourage users to voice any concerns and also to suggest ways of improving the non-destructive monitoring system. The sampling tables mentioned in this video are available in the following link. To improve our understanding of the physiological development of cassava through detailed recording of cassava growth during all stages of its development under a range of conditions. The information and understanding generated can be used to improve cassava growth and simulation models. Benia Caliper, tape measure ruler, forms for recording information, labels or tags with strings for marking leaves, pencil, permanent marker, an instrument for measuring leaf area in the field, camera, computer. Sample size. Five representative plants for each treatment or variety should be monitored. All monitored plants should be surrounded by at least one border plant. Record of germination. Monitor the crop every five days after planting to observe the date when the first shoots appear from the original planting piece or cutting. Evaluate at least 20 plants if possible and when 50% of the cuttings have germinated with new green shoots emerging, record the date of germination. Record the germination date in the form established for the first sampling. First sampling. Selection of shoots to monitor. When most of the plants have germinated and the first leaves are sufficiently expanded that the petiole is clearly visible and separates the leaf from the stem, select five representative plants in each plot or field. Count and record the number of shoots on each of the plants selected to be monitored. For each plant, select at random one of the shoots. Tickets. Label the tickets with the plot identification and the date. These tickets can be color coded with a different color for each date of placement to facilitate later collection of fallen tickets. On the selected shoot of each plant, hang a ticket on the highest leaf on which the ticket can easily be placed. Count the number of nodes, starting from the lowest node on the new shoot, up to the node which subtends the ticketed leaf and record the number. Take care to only count the nodes of the new shoot and not those on the original cutting or planting piece. When plants are very small, it is advisable to use small tickets that do not damage the plant and are not in contact with the soil. Frequency of monitoring. After the first sampling, plots should be monitored at fixed intervals. When monitoring is very frequent, great care must be taken not to compact the soil, especially during the rainy season. The sampling frequency can be varied with some recommending weekly sampling, others at two weekly intervals and up to monthly four-week intervals. If a sampling date is missed due to unforeseen problems, continue with the sampling as soon as possible after the missed sample. The data can still be used. When weekly monitoring is used, certain measurements are made on a weekly basis and others every two weeks. If the monitoring is carried out on a two-week or monthly basis, 
All the measurements should be made at each sampling date. Collection of tickets. On entering the field for both weekly, two weekly or monthly monitoring, the fallen leaves or tickets on the ground are collected. The date of collections is recorded in the sampling table. If you cannot verify the information on the label because it is ineligible, due to its poor condition, it should be possible to estimate the original placement date by looking at the date on the lowest ticket still on the plant. As mentioned earlier, colour coding of the tickets also aids ticket date identification. Nodes and branching. After collecting the fallen tickets, count the number of new nodes starting from the node that subtends the leaf with the highest level, i.e. latest ticket. As you count upwards, you may encounter a branch point. If you encounter a branch point, record the number of nodes up to the branch point from the last ticket and the number of branches at the branch point. Randomly select one of the branches and continue as previously. If you do not encounter a branch point, you will either encounter an active apex or a dead apex. If you encounter a dead apex, record the dead apex in the sampling table and return to the last branching point. Select another branch and continue the process as before. If you arrive at an active apex, record the number of nodes either from the last ticket placed on the plant on the previous visit or the number of nodes from the last branching point encountered in the current visit. The counting of nodes stops at the highest point where a label can easily be hung on the expanding leaf and petioli. Hang a new ticket on this leaf and petioli. Frequency of monitoring. After the first sampling, if the monitoring is done on a weekly basis, the following measurements are taken every other week. If monitoring is on a fortnightly or monthly basis, the measurements are made on each visit. Identification of first fully expanded leaf. Try to get to the field early in the morning so as to avoid too much sun. On one of the branches, identify the first fully expanded leaf. The first fully expanded leaf can be identified by such factors as the angle between the petiole and stem, the angle between leaf lamina and the petiole, petiole and leaf blade colour and size. Generally, as you move down the stem of the plant, you'll find each successive leaf is larger than the previous leaf, until you reach a point where several leaves are more or less the same size. The first of these leaves of similar size from the top down is taken as the first fully expanded leaf. Usually, close to the branching point, there are one or two small but fully expanded leaves. Do not use these leaves for leaf area measurement. Determination of leaf area. Once the fully expanded leaf has been identified, the leaf area is determined using the leaf area apparatus. This apparatus is created with two anti-glare laminas and a scale to take a photograph of the leaf and then analyze its area with the software image J. Insert the first fully expanded leaf still attached to the plant between the two laminas of the leaf area apparatus. Care should be taken to ensure that the leaf is not damaged. Once the leaf is between the lamina, take a photograph of the leaf in the leaf area apparatus, with the camera held vertically above the leaf area apparatus. A label should be placed in the leaf area apparatus to identify the photograph later. We have found that one person, with practice, can place the leaf in the apparatus and take the photograph. However, this takes practice. Hence, we strongly advise practicing this procedure before monitoring and when possible having an assistant in the field. Determination of the length and diameter of internodes. Identify the branching levels of the plant and record the number of branching levels. These branching levels 
should be the same as those determined when counting the number of nodes and can be determined by following down the stem from the last ticket that was placed on the plant at the start of the monitoring visit. At each level of branching, divide each of the shoots monitored in sections with each section corresponding to a distinct distance between nodes or internode length. Generally, the first internodes of each branching level have a different length to the others and should be treated as a separate section. To facilitate identification of the sections at later monitoring visits, the lignified sections can be identified by permanent marker. In each of the distinct stem sections, record the branch level. Record if the section is green or lignified. Count and record the number of nodes in the section as the number of nodes from the last branch. Measure and record the length of the section. Measure the diameter in the middle of the section with the vernier caliper. Height of plant. Finally, with a meter stick, measure the height of the plant from the ground to the leaf that is at the plant's highest point and also measure the height from the ground to the first branching. Total apex number. Finally, count the total number of live and dead apices on each plant and record them.